make miso with a bean that might be growing on a tree in your neighborhood. This is a pod from the Kentucky coffee tree. Imnocladis dioecia. Oh, look at the size of these beans. Shells on the beans have started to discolor a little, but the beans on the inside are still good. And that's what we're using. So give me a second to shell like a hefty cat's weight in beans. We're gonna shuck an Aussie's weight in beans. After I take the beans out of their big shell and they're in their little shell, I like to make a nice little cut because once they cook, it'll make getting the good bean inside so much easier. So satisfying. The beans have been shucked. It's time to boil the toxins out. Bye bye toxins, toxins, bye bye. It's time to free the beans from their husks. Little bean on the inside. They taste kind of like edamame plus lima beans, but better. Now that we have our beautiful shelled beans, we're gonna cook them until they're mushy enough to smush with your fingers. Beep, 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 beep. Hi, it's tomorrow now. Yes, I'm dressed as Maid Marian. She's cute. I don't wanna hear it. I burnt the beans yesterday. If you think about how sad you are when you burn food that you bought, imagine how sad I am about burning food that I gathered in the 90 degree heat. <laughs> Anyways, thank goodness I have more beans, so that's what I'm sitting here shucking. I will say leaving them in water overnight does help this process. Look at the goo escaping from the seed. Okay, we're doing it again on a lower heat, and I'm gonna check it every 30 minutes. I literally can't burn these because these are the last ones of the season, so. <laughs> it's been two hours. I'm starting to be able to squish them with my fingies. I'm gonna give them another 30 minutes and I'm just gonna call it a day. So it's finishing up. I am sanitizing the inside of this fermentation jar with some spicy water. I just took the beans off the heat. It's time to wake up the miso mold. That's right, koji. <laughs> this is rice that has been inoculated with koji, which is the fungus that's used to make soy sauce, miso, sake, a whole lot of things. I'm gonna be adding warm water to some of these grains to wake that mold up. It smells like popcorn, I'm obsessed. Wakey, wakey. While our grains are hydrating, we're gonna make a paste out of our beans. Pasteification complete. We got 240 grams of bean mush, so it's time to do some math for how much koji and salt we need. I can't do fractions in my head anymore. I need a pencil and a piece of paper. 1.5 over 1 equals 2. 140 over X, we're solving for X. 160 grams of hydrated koji. Oh, okay. One little spoonful. Oh, come on. Yeah. I also need 16 grams of salt. Yeah. Now it's time to mix in our fixins. I'm going to mix this with clean hands so my hand flavor can be imparted to it. Hand flavor is actually like a legitimate and important thing in a lot of fermentation. Here's our sanitized jar. We're gonna sprinkle a little salt onto the bottom. That'll stop mold from growing. We're gonna make little balls to make sure we get all of the air out. We don't want there to be any air because that means it could go bad. So there's no air in it. You're just gonna plop that in and push it down with its neighbor. Now that all of our pre-miso is in, we're also gonna salt the top. And here is our miso baby. I have a salt weight, which is just a Ziploc full of salt on top of it, along with a layer of plastic wrap. We're really just trying to make sure she doesn't get moldy. Now she needs to go in a cool, dark place for the next six months. So follow along if you wanna get some updates. I'll probably check in every month, but she won't be usable for another six months. I did just taste a little, and it already tastes really good. I just realized it's gonna be ready on 420, so if that's not a reason to stick around to see, I don't know what is. Happy me sewing, happy snacking, don't die.